Hello, and welcome to another episode of Drum Book Studies, where we take a look at a classic book, what's inside, and show you a few things that you can do with that book. Now, in today's episode, we are dealing with another classic. I'm talking about good old stick control. So what we're going to do today with this book is I'm going to show you how to use pages 5, 6, and 7, specifically, how to use those pages to develop that Steve Gadd jazz samba that he used to play. He was very famous for playing a jazz samba with the right hand on the snare and the left hand on the hi-hat, closed, while the bass drum would play that gunt, 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 gunt pattern. So back in the 80s when I was introduced to Steve Gadd doing this, I tried it out, you know, and I just sort of started doing stuff like Now, if you noticed, there was a bit of a synchronization issue with my bass drum not lining up uh, with some of my notes, right? And that's what's going to happen to to some of you when you try this out. It's going to be a little bit uh, off sync. I figured let's use stick control, pages five to seven, to help not only get rid of the synchronization issues when you're doing this, but there are some patterns in here that actually sound very Latin, uh, very Samba-ish, very cool patterns. So what I would suggest you do is start with page five, play each pattern for as long as you think you need to do them with that bass drum pattern so that everything lines up at first. So it's kind of a technical exercise. And go through all the patterns. And then when you get to, I believe it's 16, 17, and 18, those three specifically, when you get there, you'll see, sounds like you're playing a jazz samba. It's pretty cool. So let me just try a few of these, uh, like starting with number one, you know, I'll just kind of go down from one to six, seven, eight, whatever. I'll just try a few of them just to give you an idea. So starting with number one, good old singles. Five, which is the paradiddle, single paradiddle. Six. So you get the idea. Um, just go through each pattern. Now check out what happens when you get to 16. Number 17.
So you can see how 16 and 17 start to sound like you're playing an actual samba, different variations. Now let's just try number 18. Very similar to number 16, actually. It's an incredible exercise, really. If you do all 72, by the time you're done them all, man, you know, you're going to have that whole synchronization of the bass drum with every single note that you're playing. You're going to cover all the different scenarios, okay? I have to work on this a little bit. It's been a long time, so I need to revisit this. But I'm telling you, it's amazing. Once you get past these 72 patterns, you should be able to just kind of whip something up on the fly. I'm going to try my best to close this out with a little bit of improv here. like to close by saying give this a try trust me <laughs> it's a hell of a workout um, and you'll just get that whole Steve Gadd Samba thing happening it's been a long time since I have revisited this whole stick control Steve Gadd jazz Samba thing good luck with it hope you enjoyed this episode if you did click like uh, share it with as many friends as you like Drop a comment if you wish. For those of you who have not yet subscribed, do so. Click the notification bell and you'll always be up to speed with my most recent video. Well, that's it, folks, for today on Drum Book Studies. Stay tuned for the next Drum Book Studies episode where, once again, we will take a classic book, take a sneak peek inside, and come up with some way to apply it on the drum kit. All right, take care. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.